today at Happy Lang students. This is Ms. McGuire trying to get a message out to you before you take this test on Wednesday. All right, so I had some thoughts after reading your essays and I want to tell them to you now. <laughs> My first question for you is, after you read the prompt carefully, did you stop and think, what are the possible answers to this prompt? Did you stop and think about what the binary positions would be? We've talked about this with the synthesis essay, but it's the same thing for the argument essay. The reason why you need to stop and think about what the other side is, is that will help you get to the nuances of the discussion. That's how you get to the tension of why this prompt was presented to you. So my first question is, did you do that? Did you stop and look at the prompt and think, hmm, what are the two ways someone could respond? For this prompt, that would be polite speech is very valuable and serves an important function in our society. On the other hand, someone could say polite speech is degrading our society into people that say things to each other that where they don't actually mean them and stops people from having real conversations. I read that in someone's essay and I thought that was an interesting point, but before you start writing, you at least have to think in your head, what are the two sides of this? Again, it doesn't mean you need to write an aggressive argument that defends your side. It just means you need to be able to acknowledge and respond to the potential uh, objections of your reader. Remember, they're always there. You have to picture the little person, maybe it's me, sitting on your shoulder while you're writing and saying things like, okay, well, what would a critic say? And so what? Which brings me to my next point. Um, so something I noticed in some essays was that you presented different examples but did not connect those examples and that left your explanation I guess or your discussion of the implications of the examples to be a little shallow if you can find what your two examples have in common that will lead you to look at the larger implication I hope that makes sense actually maybe I should try to think of an example right now for you okay I thought of an example so um, let's say your two body paragraphs, your two points, were um, you were discussing how if you bump into an old friend, you'll say something like, oh, let's get together, even if you don't actually mean it. So there's one example of speech that is polite, but doesn't actually have literal, or doesn't necessarily have literal intent behind it. Um, and then what about if your second example is using polite speech to your teacher. What do both of those things have in common? They're different situations. One involves maybe a peer that you haven't seen for a while or someone that you know that you just kind of bump into when you want to be nice. And then the other one is the respect, I guess, you show toward your teacher. What can you draw? What, I guess, connection can you draw between those two things? Um, rather than writing two paragraphs that don't have any connection to each other, you want to think about how both of those things function in society. So how do they both function in society? I don't know. You could say something like um, they both allow us to have peaceful and harmonious interactions with each other on a daily basis and maybe keep us kind of sure of having a nice interaction with the old friend who bumped into you the next time you see them. Or also, this just popped in my head as I was thinking, both of those things, let's say you need a recommendation from your teacher later, or let's say later the friend that you bumped into works at a company that you might want to um, work at and you need somebody to give you a reference or something or a connection and a way in. Both, in both of those instances, being nice and polite helps you solidify your own kind of standing. So I 
think I didn't really realize that until I started talking about it, which would be the equivalent of you writing about it in your essay. But you want to think, how do these things connect? How do the two disparate like scenarios or examples you came up with, how do they connect? That will lead you to do that deeper analysis. I hope that makes sense to you. If it doesn't, of course, you know I'm available uh, Monday lab and Tuesday lab, and then Wednesday, well, you know what's happening. Um, okay, so that was my second point. Um, that actually, what I just mentioned goes into my third point. Remember our, uh, our structure for a thesis? I claim whatever because, or although, whatever I claim blah, 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 because, blah, blah, blah. It seems like a lot of you missed the because. That's an important thing to make sure you have. Again, this is something that we talked about heavily during the synthesis, but it applies to the argument essay as well. You need that because. That because helps shape what your essay is going to be about. So if when you start writing, Maybe you're kind of unsure what that because is, and you have an example in your head, but you're not sure exactly how you're going to, I guess, frame that, and you want to just start writing. Um, maybe leave a little space so you can add to your thesis. Anyway, the because, what that does is kind of let you take an angle on the topic. So let's say, going back to the examples I just mentioned, that um, your two scenarios are you bump into an old friend and you say, oh, let's get together, and or you use polite speech to your teacher. Maybe your angle you'd be taking is that polite speech allows us to remain in the kind of social standing that we would like to remain in. It helps us solidify our good intentions or our good reputation with people around us so that we can keep opportunities open for ourselves in the future. That would be an angle you're taking and both of those examples connect to it. In your thesis, you really need to, if possible, try to get to that because. So maybe the thesis for that essay, this hypothetical essay I just mentioned, is uh, the light speech is very valuable because it allows you to remain in good standing with people around you and keep opportunities open for your future. Um, and then go to those two examples. You need some kind of grounding, some kind of controlling idea. Otherwise, you might just start rambling in your essay. So you want to aim for that. I realize that might be kind of difficult to do in the small amount of time that you have, but read the prompt, think of the two sides, come up with two examples or pieces of evidence that you can bring into the conversation and think of how those two examples have something in common with each other. I recommend trying to do these things before you actually start writing, if you can, um, in that short amount of time that you have. But Yes, that's that's an important thing. Try to think of your angle. Um, someone else in their essay mentioned that polite speech keeps us safe. It keeps us from all getting into fights with each other all the time. That could be an angle. You could say polite speech has the function of allowing society to uh, progress smoothly day by day, something like that. You want to have some kind of controlling idea, controlling example in your essay that you can return back to rather than sort of just flailing around and not having a central idea. Um, this is something we would definitely have talked about if we had spent a little bit more time in the argument essay. I apologize for that, but this is why I'm making a video for you during my free time. Um, because I think these things are very important. Um, also, another thing I want to mention is that this prompt um, kind of gave you a clue as to what the uh, 
tension is, as to kind of what, I don't know, I guess why this is a thing worth talking about. Remember, in your essay, you need to justify the college board's choice of a prompt. That's what you want to do. Remember how we talked about that, like, that helps your ethos? You want to make them feel good? If you answer in a really simplistic way and kind of ignore what they've given you in the prompt to guide you toward why this is something that needs to be talked about, it's not going to look good. So in this prompt, the key words they gave you were sometimes polite speech is used to communicate politeness rather than literal intent. So you need to think about when those instances are that people say things and don't literally mean them. Some of you just sort of brushed past that idea of this, that's kind of where they wanted you to go and why they're presenting this to you. Because there are times when we say things to each other that are polite that we don't actually mean. And that's why this is worth talking about. Is that a problem or is that a good thing? That's kind of what they're asking you to think about. So don't ignore the key words in the prompt. They're telling you where they want you to go with it. I hope that makes sense. Uh, that being said, we always talk about using evidence. In this essay, you guys did go with your instincts and you realized that this was not a prompt that was looking for historical examples or scientific examples, that it was very, I guess, conducive to you using your own personal examples. But a lot of you sort of just wrote and wrote and wrote about your, like, musing about your ideas on polite speech without grounding it in an example. You need to give an example. If you're saying something like, oh, we do this in every day, or we do this, but you're not saying what that is, then you're leaving your reader kind of lost as to what exactly you mean. Examples, examples, examples. Remember, evidence does not have to be some formal, textual, historical reference or something like that. It just means you're giving your reader some evidence to ground your argument in. When you're reading something, you want examples of what you're talking about. You don't want to just read someone that's going to read something that's going on and on and on and, ex and describing something that's kind of abstract, like polite speech, without giving an example. You need to ground your ideas in examples. Remember, even if they're not some kind of formal thing that um, you know is from some other text or event. It can just be an example of something you know of. In this essay, that was basically what it called for. What are some examples of polite speech? You give the example and then you discuss it in light of whatever your kind of angle is and your thesis is on this prompt. Okay, I think that is all I have. Um, and I am going to put this up on Classroom and give you guys an assignment. So please um, check for that. Uh, that is all for me. Okay, I just thought of one more thing. Remember how I said that you would not be getting this question as a prompt on the exam if it had a simple answer? I think too many of you gave simple answers. Just saying that polite speech allows us to be respectful to each other, don't you think that that's a little bit simplistic? I think they're looking for a little bit more than that. Um, if that were the only answer to this, I don't think that they would be giving you the this as a prompt. Um, if that were the only thing you were supposed to discuss, I think that would not get you a very high score. Um, so think to yourself, is my um, discussion of this topic simplistic? Uh, is, is it, does it have, does it show the tension? Um, is my answer too easy? If you think your answer is too easy, think about what a critic might say. Present some other ideas somehow. You've got to give it that tension and you need to not be overly simplistic in your answer. So, to reiterate, if you answered this prompt with something like, polite speech allows us to be respectful, and then gave a couple examples of polite speech being respectful, I don't think that that quite is going to cut it 
for a higher score on this exam. Um, perhaps if you would like a, to be in that middle range, sure, but we're aiming for higher than that. We want fives, right? So um, try to think of something that isn't just the simple answer. Or if you do, if you can only think of the simple answer, try to think in your head, put the little reader on your shoulder, what would they say? That will hopefully allow you to get a little bit more tension, nuance into your discussion so it's not just a flat, polite speech lets us be respectful at the end. So, that's another thing I have to say. Okay.